and welcome to this week's art class. Now this week I've got something a little bit different for you. I've got the most fabulous picture. It's a lovely thatched cottage with the most sumptuous garden. It's full of plants and flowers and bushes and there's trees behind. So there's an awful lot going on. It's a very, very busy picture, but we're not going to do it in watercolor. What we're going to do is uh, work on it with pen and a little bit of wash. What that will do is basically it's a monochrome picture so just one color but you're going to have all those different tonal values that will give it a lovely sense of depth. Now first of all I wanted to just talk to you a little bit about pens. I've got a huge array of different pens that I use. I've got dip pens, I've got felt pens, I've got gel pens, um, so many different things but it really depends on what you want to achieve. Now these ones, these Stetler ones, um, they're interesting because some of them are very very fine so you can do very fine detail um, but uh, I'm not actually too keen on them. They're a weeny bit too fine um, and they're hugely expensive and they don't smudge. Um, these ones came from the pound shop um, for some bizarre reason they were actually two pounds but they did come from the pound shop and they're quite cheap gel pens they work fairly well and these ones were actually a pound from the pound shop and um, I really love them they they work well they're fairly fine and what we need to do is make sure that they will smudge but just a little bit not too much because at the end of the picture um, when we want a very fine shadow, maybe under the eaves or on part of the plaster on the front of the house, that's something that you really don't want to do with the nib of the pen because it's like cross hatching, it would seem too heavy. So we just want to use the, a smudge from the line that you've made sort of above or below um, to give us that extra tonal value that would work so well. Let me show you. Right, I've got a number of pens here which I'm going to try out um, and decide really which ones might be best for the for the picture we're doing today. This one here is a, a Stetler, what's it calling itself, a Stetler pigment marker. Um, Oh, I'm not sure about this. Multi-purpose fine marker. I'm not liking that because it's purple straight away and that's not really what I want. Um, this one here is called a soft touch rollerball. Um, basically, these are pens that I've managed to root out from various pencil cases, drawers and all over my studio here um, and um, this one is just called a, a nib fine, light, fine liner. It's nearly run out, in fact I can't remember where I even got it but um, it's been very useful and I like it a lot. Uh, this one is a, a zebra gel pen and that's the two pounds for five from the um, pound shop or the two pound shop. Um, this Sharpie, it's fat and really you don't have an awful lot of control with it, but it is quite handy being a felt pen for areas, um, if you really want to uh, cover large areas of black, because using something like a, felt, a gel pen, that's an awful lot of scribble. But if you've got a felt pen, you can cover quite a large area. This one is just the ordinary gel pen that I got from the from the pound shop, costing a pound for five. And this other one I've got here is called just a paper mate. gel pen so it would have been more expensive being paper made. Um, what I want to do is just try a little bit of water so we can see how water soluble uh, the ink is, how permanent it is, whether it will run and make that nice shadow I was talking about or whether 
it won't release any of its pigments. Now in certain situations you don't want that to happen. You don't want the ink to be running all over the place but in our picture today we want just a little bit of the ink to just spread so it'll give us a few little shadows. So the Stettler pigment marker is actually giving us quite a bit really. It's slightly pinkish but um, Not too much though. Let's try this one. This is the multi-purpose fine marker. I didn't think much was going to happen with that but I didn't like it anyway. Soft touch rollerball. That's really rather nice. That's a nice shadow isn't it? Nib fine liner. See that's giving quite a lot as well. It, to a certain extent I think this is too much because you might find that um, if you just wanted to just put a very subtle shadow for example today on the um, on the white uh, render on the front of the cottage um, for a shadow that would sort of be a bit too heavy I think. Uh, the zebra gel pen that's quite nice just a little bit not too much um, the Sharpie I didn't think was going to smudge at all, not even that great big bit there, look it's not giving up any. Um, the gel pen from the pound shop, not much, a little bit. Sometimes what these um, things do, they're more likely to be there. You're more likely to be able to move the ink around immediately after after applying it to the paper. So be wary of that because you might be using a pen expecting to move the ink around um, but go back to it the next day and find that it's really quite permanent. Um, and the paper mate, oh that's interesting, you see that's coming out blue. Um, it's a nice effect but I don't know whether I'd want it for this particular uh, picture. Um, I think really the best, um, I like this soft touch roller ball which I've used in the picture. I also used a lot of this zebra uh, gel pen as well. Um, in between I also used some water soluble drawing ink which can be very handy because you can use it very very lightly with a lot of water or you can use it a little bit thicker or more um, intense. Right, just before we start I also want to say a little thing about the paper uh, that you need to use. Now, I when I paint in watercolour I do actually favour very rough paper because I like the texture I like the tooth of the paper, I like the way I can scrub at it, do some clever things, throw salt on it, use lots and lots of water uh, and generally be quite flamboyant about the whole thing. Um, there are other watercolour artists, particularly those who are involved in any sort of um, botanical paintings, uh, who really need to have very fine detail. So rather than use rough paper, they'll use something that's known as hot pressed. Now, hot pressed watercolour paper is literally paper that has been ironed, so it's very, very smooth. And this is very handy for today's lesson because it means that you can get the fine detail with the pen, but also be able to put a wash on later and not have to worry about it cockling. While I'm here, I also want to explain to you what knot paper is. Uh, you might have bought some knot cold press paper which sounds a bit counterintuitive really, but not paper is literally not hot pressed, which means that it's cold pressed. I've got some here and it's called not cold pressed in brackets. Uh, this other one though is cold press not in brackets, which to me sounds a bit like a surly teenager really. In fact, it's a bit like calling the hot tap in your bathroom the hot tap and calling the other tap the not hot tap. 
but for the lesson today, I'm actually just using the stuff from um, WH Smith. It's not hugely expensive. It's not the best watercolor paper. Um, it is fairly thick. It's nice for drawing on, but it really is. It's it's smooth, um, which is really what we want because um, I think in terms of the picture that we've got today, it's a cottage. It's it's a you know fairly ancient cottage. So. It, straight lines really don't matter too much but if you were trying to draw something um, that needed very straight lines you really wouldn't be able to do it on uh, on rough paper right now just before we start i want to talk to you just a little bit about um, making marks uh, the whole of this picture is full of various different sorts of foliage and really what we're going to do is to suggest those different tonal um, qualities by making different marks so there's a number of different things you do but the joy of a picture like this means that you know you can make some squiggles and go with it build it up and build it up and and see how it works um, you could start with something particularly if um, you do quite a loose sketch to start off with. We don't want too much detail because you want to be fairly free with your inking. Um, so particularly in terms of outline, you've got a number of different areas of, of bushes and plants and things like that. And it's a good idea just to make, or if you've got a tree, something like this uh, with little spots. If you make a hard outline, like this, um, you really don't have much um, leeway in terms of softening the edges. So you can do some sort of negative scribbling in here, but you might find that you're stuck to an outline that's quite difficult in terms of, you know, finding what you can actually do with it. Whereas if you do something like this, you can work within that outline quite loosely, make it fairly dark where you want to uh, do a little bit of negative, scri uh, negative scribbling as well, but you're not um, sort of obliged to stick to that mark that you've made. It's also very useful if you look at the top of the building, at the top of the, the thatch, if you make a mark like this something like that. You, you're pretty much stuck with it, um, particularly if the foliage behind is quite, quite light. Whereas if you make the outlines quite softly, like this, you're not committed to too much. And then you can decide whether this area, area here is indeed hard and dark or it could be it could be quite light and you can soften that area but if you've got this hard line here you're pretty much stuck with it now the spots are also useful for distant areas of um, just little bushes you can build them up like that and then subsequently with your pen uh, when you add a little bit of um, water you can soften it up. You can also build shade quite nicely as well, like this, which works well. And it's also quite useful to help with your your negative mark making as well. Um, directional scribble is quite handy. If you look at the the particular shrub at the front, it's sort of that shape, but we've got, it's very light, so we want to get that dark in between. So it's mostly built up in quite a negative way. Be aware of what's coming about here, so you've got some other leaf shapes, but this dark disappears into that shape, that leaf shape. Like 
like that. Another mark we need to make is um, on the thatch itself. Um, it's quite directional and this needs a little bit of practice because the sort of effect we want is this idea of the thatch. So we want to make this sort of mark just catching the top of the paper. This is another reason really why you don't want a paper with too much of a tooth because obviously if it was very bumpy paper you wouldn't be able to get that. Um, it is quite difficult to stop at the bottom so I would recommend for the edge of the roof you can just run into it or run over a piece of paper like that and that gives you fabulous edge look and if you need to you can join that up and put the shading underneath. Now some of the areas on the picture are actually very very dark so you've got something like that and then we've got some really quite dark windows. Let me just sketch something like this. So imagine this being a very very dark window and using a pen you can do some cross hatching like this to make it very dark. Um, but after a while it can look, depending on how wide your nib is, it can look a little bit cumbersome. So you can do most of the shading with your pen and then towards the end of your picture you can actually finish off with a little bit of, um, of liquid liquid ink. You can start very lightly, so this is very very watery, and just merge it like like that. And then if you need more you can also you can put a bit more on. So basically what I've been doing here is just using a damp brush to loosen some of the ink work that I've been doing where I think it needs a bit of shading and where I want it to be a lot lot darker just used a little bit of dilute ink.
Right, now you can see at this point I've made a bit of a mistake here. I've managed to put a big blot of ink in the middle of the puff. Anywhere else I would have been able to disguise it as a bush or something, but here it's, it's, I've tried to scrub it, it won't come out. So I need to cover it up. I wouldn't recommend using anything like Tipex because those um, particularly, um, because those things really don't work very well because they tend to get a surface that you can't continue painting over. What I would use is some white gouache, which is pretty much like watercolour, but it's a lot more ch uh, it's a lot more chalky. And um, I'm just painting it on quite lightly, and you can see I can wash over it and then put a few more um, ink marks over the top. And um, I don't mind the effect at all. I think it looks all right. Actually, after completing this, I did put the picture through my copier, and luckily the copier will take quite thick watercolour paper. And just for fun, I did some watercolour on top of it as well, because I couldn't resist it. So um, have a look at that too and see what you think. I really enjoyed doing this one, and I think you will too. Some of you will be very precise in your mark making, others might be more flamboyant and much looser with the pen work. But either way, I can't wait to see them. Send them in to me, and I'll put them in the gallery. Thank you so much for your very kind donations. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.